most of the task with cutting dovetails is getting rid of the, the waste. In this case, uh, where I'm cutting the pins, it would be the waste where the tails go. The actual fine work of making the dovetail fit is, is really just, a, you know, in terms of volume, a very small part of the job. So the quicker you can get rid of the waste, the better. Uh, this technique I'm using uh, right now uses a freehand, uh, small router, freehand with the, uh, the, the same dovetail bit in here. So I can just freehand cut out most of the waste between, uh, you know, where the, where the tail is supposed to go, between pins. And just leave enough where I can come back later with a chisel and just pair up to the lines and also chop down to get a flat uh, a bottom. Uh, and, uh, you know, that just saves me a lot of time. Uh, you got to spend some time setting up the router, and I've got to stop here so I don't go too far into the piece, but uh, it seems to work very well, and I'll show you. That's all there is to it. Um, that's a lot faster, plus I get a nice flat uh, base here. Uh, I don't have to pare that away, all I have to do is adjust the router correctly. Now I might point out that uh, whereas when you're cutting the tails or you're cutting the pins for a through dovetail, the router bit is uh, basically axis is uh, the same as the grain of the wood, uh, which uh, causes the fibers to come out as long pieces, uh, you would use a climb cut for that. And I won't get into the details of that, but if you think about it, a climb cut will minimize the amount of tear out. But in this case, I'm cutting into the end grain, and so I'm using a normal cut where uh, the, uh, the force of me pushing the, the router is against the direction of the, uh, of the bit, and that uh, gives me more control in that particular cut. At this point, the production slows up a little bit as we move to the hand tools to finish off the half wind dovetail pins. I've got the uh, board with the, most of the waste cut out. This is the front of one of the drawers. Uh, I made a mark uh, to the uh, width of the sides. And now I'm going to place a block. I've got sandpaper on the back of this, and I've got a very true edge, 90 degree edge. I'm going to place that block right at my cut line so that I can use that as a backer for my chisels to make sure I don't go too deep with the uh, with the dovetail cuts and uh, the pin cuts. <clears throat> I remember the chisel is going to try to push that block back a little bit just by the wedging action so you want to make sure that you get that block <clears throat> a little bit forward on your line. Clamp that block in place it serves to hold down the work as well. Now because these are half blinds I don't have to put a, a waste piece underneath here because my chisel is not going to go all the way through. If I was doing through, through dovetails uh, in this manner I'd put a waste block underneath so that uh, my chisel wouldn't cut up my bench. Okay so I've got my uh, backer block here in place. Now the first thing I want to do is uh, go ahead and get a good uh, Mark on the depth here, take out a little, little neck there, and that gives me, uh, it, it lets the, uh, the piece itself start acting as the backer to prevent the chisel from uh, wanting to move into the board too much. So I'll just go ahead and hit all those real quick so that uh, in the event that the block does slide a little bit, I already have the depth of my cuts registered. cutting out this waste we're also going to be cutting into the sides. I'm going to go ahead and move the camera closer. You won't be able to see me but you'll be able to see the work. Okay I hope that gives you a better view of what I'm doing. So 
Uh, like I say, I, earlier I just cut out, uh, I started the cut for the waist. I'm just going to go ahead and finish that now. If I hadn't already cut out the majority of the waste, I'd be working and working and working to get done what I just did here in, in a few strokes. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of wider chisel and just kind of get some of this waste out of the way. I'm not doing the fine cuts just yet. I'm just trying to... trying to get the big pieces out so then I can do the fine work last. I find a little fishtail chisel works best for cleaning out these dovetails. Okay, now, to pair these sides, instead of coming in long ways like this and having the grain try to direct my chisel and maybe go off at a skewed angle, I'm going to go ahead and pair like this. And I'll just show you on this one. I'm going to go ahead and line up my chisel with the, with the pencil lines I made. And just go ahead and pair off this way. That gives me a more control. I'm able to get a flat side. I'm able to keep in line with the lines I made on the, on the end grain here and also start my chisel. It doesn't try to drift on its own according to the grain. I've done it both ways and I just think that this gives me more control. Getting those very last little corners back there is what always takes the most time. So the fishtail comes in very useful because its shape allows you to get into those corners a little more easily. And there we go. There's one that's cleaned up. When we do the final fit up with the tail piece, if we have to shave off a little bit of the faces, it's easy to do. I'm just going to go ahead and continue and do the rest of them and then we'll get into fitting the tail piece. Okay, I've got the, the uh, pins all cut. Now I'm going to take that piece of uh, side that fits in there. Uh, one thing I did when I cut the, uh, use the router, I made sure that uh, uh, I was a little bit high on that because it's easier to take off than it is to add when you're working with wood. And so when I fit up the, uh, the piece here, I know you can't see it, but when I fit it in here, there's actually a little bit of space here right in that, uh, right in that gap there. Maybe you can see it um, right there. Okay. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to my crosscut sled on the table saw and just take off the slightest bit on these ends and that'll make the fit perfect. I probably won't have to do any uh, additional pairing. Okay, I just took a hair, just a breath off of those ends. good fit and uh, we're in good shape and we can move on to the next one. Well at this point 
the uh, dovetails are all done. The insides of all the drawers have been sanded down to P320 grit. And I've got one coat of shellac on the insides. Now I'm cutting a groove for the drawer bottom to fit in. I've got a 3 8 inch wing cutter with a bearing guide. It's going to cut one quarter inch deep. And uh, in the case of this particular drawer, because the top, or the front, excuse me, extends down below the sides, I can't route the groove with the front installed. So I'll route the three sides, you know, the two sides in the back. And then later on, I'll assemble the front on there and mark where that groove has to be, and cut that groove separately. So uh, I'm cutting this groove with a half inch clearance between the bottom of the, of the bottom and the uh, dust divider. And I picked that so that uh, it would fall right in the middle of this uh, tail and therefore right in the middle of the pins uh, uh, opening, you know, between the pins on the front and back. together. Uh, I just think it makes the bottom more secure and I'm using good 3 8 inch uh, Baltic birch plywood so I'm not expecting it to break in the future and uh, so it'll last forever that way. There are a number of grooves that have to be cut into the insides of the drawer parts for dividers and that sort of thing. In fact I cut the uh, groove at the bottom of the front pieces uh, using a straight bit in my router table and I uh, just went ahead and, and cut that across but uh, now I'm cutting grooves for drawer dividers and so this particular drawer is the file drawer and it has a divider that goes fore and aft to uh, give you a, a space for file folders and I'm going to use my router with a half inch uh, straight cut bit uh, to guide the router, the router base is three inches or six inches diameter, so I've got a line drawn three inches from the center of where I want to cut. The cut is going to be a stopped cut, ending up here and ending down here in the groove for the bottom. I've got a block here with sandpaper attached to it, uh, so it won't slip when I place it on my line and then clamp it to the table or to the bench. It's important to use that sandpaper because otherwise these blocks will slide around. It's on there real good now. And uh, this will be a plunge cut because I'll have to plunge in down here and then move on up to my cut line. So there's all the drawer parts all dovetailed and grooved and ready to, uh, almost ready to put together. I'm going to make the drawer bottoms next and then I'll go ahead and sand the insides and do some more finish and then everything gets glued up. You might notice that on the front drawers I have stained the end grain. That's because the front, uh, the drawer fronts are going to get the stain like the rest of the maple and I want the end grain to uh, stain now uh, because it's a lot easier to do it now than it is after the drawers are glued up. I chose for the drawer bottoms this plywood. Uh, my supplier calls it Russian birch. I think it's probably the same as Baltic birch. It's 
It's like three eighths inch plywood with seven plies and no voids. And I chose that because it would be nice and strong for these, you know, this is a big drawer bottom. And now all I'm doing is putting on a few light coats of uh, half pound cut blonde shellac. Uh, just enough to give it a nice feel and keep the dust from collecting on the wood, that sort of thing. But we're not obviously looking for a, a fine finish on a drawer bottom. And we'll just wipe some of this on, sand down. Probably using about 320 grit sandpaper. Put two or three coats on until it feels about right. And then we'll go ahead and uh, put the doors, drawers together.